Hello, I am Dr. Chris Downing, the proud superintendent of the amazing Anaheim Elementary School District. In today's town hall, we will provide an update on the planned reopening of our district for in-person instruction that is available for those families who would like their students to attend in person and participate with our hybrid schedule. We will also provide you with information on the options you have if you would like for your child to remain in virtual instruction and what the instructional day will consist of for all three of our available options. We will also provide you with an update on the actions and safety protocols that are in place to ensure that our schools are ready for students to return. Let's begin today's town hall by looking at the declining COVID-19 data for Orange County and Anaheim. We would like to share with you that counties across the state are measured by the average number of daily new cases of COVID-19 per 100,000 citizens. The California Safe Schools for All guidance identifies counties with more than seven daily new cases as being in the purple tier. Due to surges in this data through December, January, and into the beginning of February, Orange County was in the purple tier, and our schools were required to remain in distance learning. Based on the declining data, as of Sunday, March 14th, Orange County has now returned to the red tier, meaning that there are between four and seven daily new cases of COVID per 100,000 citizens. As shown with this next graph, throughout the year, the data in Anaheim remained higher than Orange County. But as this graph demonstrates, the data in Anaheim has also greatly declined and is now in alignment with the decline of data throughout Orange County. This next slide shows us that just like in Orange County, the data for Anaheim is also now currently between four to seven daily new cases per 100,000 citizens. As the data in our community continues to decline, our district is moving toward reopening to provide your child with the opportunity and choice to attend in person. At this time, I would like to introduce our AESD board president, Mark Lopez. Hello, AESD families. My name is Mark Lopez, and I am honored to be your AESD board president. We're providing this town hall to keep you informed about the preparations our district is making for our planned reopening. To support this planned reopening, each of you received a survey from your school, which we are asking you to complete. Your responses will help us prepare our staff to support the individual needs of your child. In the next few weeks, your school principal will also share information with you on how those families that are interested in returning to in-person instruction can access free COVID-19 testing prior to your child's return to the campus. This graphic also shows the planned reopening dates adopted by our board during our March 3rd meeting. Our district is continuing to monitor this data and will notify families if there are any changes to the planned schedule as soon as possible. Thank you again for joining us in this virtual town hall. I would like to introduce Dr. Mary Grace, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, who will discuss the instructional options that are available for all families. Today, I am going to be reviewing the educational options available to students and what in-person instruction will look like once it is safe to have our students back on campus. When students and staff return to campus, we know that first and foremost, we need to take care of everyone's social emotional needs. For the first two weeks of instruction, our teachers will work on reuniting with their students, building caring relationships, and making genuine connections by making sure our students are respected, seen, and heard, as well as an, creating an environment that helps everyone thrive. In addition to focusing on social emotional needs, we also want to guide and allow our students to continue to develop their language skills. We will do this through interactive activities as well as structured opportunities to practice academic discourse. Throughout this year, our academic learning has been focused on essential understandings in the areas 
of language arts and math. And we will continue to do so when we transition to in-person instruction. We are providing our parents with three educational options. One, in-person blended learning. Two, independent at-home learning. And three, enrollment in the Anaheim Elementary Online Academy. For families who choose to send their students to in-person hybrid learning, we will have a program that has students attending two days a week and continuing distance learning from home three days a week. On the days that students are in school, students will arrive at your normal start time and go directly to their classrooms where their teachers will welcome them and check them in. The instructional day will end at lunchtime. All students and families will be afforded the opportunity to take grab and go meals home each day. We will be providing a lunch meal as well as breakfast for the following day. Once the students are home, they have an additional 48 minutes of asynchronous learning, including programs like ST Math, Lexia, iStation, and Rosetta Stone. In addition, they may see their teachers in the Microsoft team for the classroom. For families who choose to remain at home at the same school and continue distance learning all five days a week, what we have is students will remain enrolled at the school. They will have limited interaction with their teacher and classmates Monday through Thursday for the first 20 minutes. They will participate in synchronous music, library, and applicable intervention, RSP, and speech services. They will also participate in synchronous learning on Fridays with the entire class through Microsoft Teams. Students at home will need to complete assigned asynchronous assignments independently. This option does not include live streaming of in-person classroom instruction. For families who choose to remain at home and want 100% distance learning, you will need to transfer your child to the Anaheim Elementary Online Academy, where students attend five days a week in distance learning. For our families who have students in our preschool through sixth grade special day classes, your students will be attending school five days a week in person with their teacher. For families who have students in our state preschool program, students will attend one day a week in person and participate in distance learning four days a week. At this time, I would like to introduce Jesse Chavaria, Assistant Superintendent of the Anaheim Elementary School District Administrative Services. He will share information on the preparations taking place at our facilities to prepare for a return to in-person instruction. Thank you, Dr. Grace. I want to share with you information on the work that has and is taking place for the return of students to in-person instruction. Every member of the maintenance and operations team from our custodians to our skilled maintenance workers has worked collaboratively to have our schools, classrooms, and offices ready for the return of students and staff. There are a multitude of things that have been done to ensure the safety of students and staff as they return to in-person learning. Staff visited and tour schools that are currently open to see their daily pro practices as well as their preparation plans so that we could rise above those plans and provide a higher level of safety for our students and staff as they return to in-person instruction. We also purchased the needed disinfecting equipment to safely disinfect classrooms and offices on a daily basis. We're disinfecting and sanitizing every space that is currently being used by staff, including district vehicles. We also purchased and installed sneeze guards for students, teachers, and support staff throughout the district. All classrooms that will be used have been set up by our custodians to provide social distancing. We have also installed touchless water refill stations at every school. We have improved the air filtration by following the California Department of Public Health guidelines related to HVAC systems. 
we installed an air purifier system. Some offices and classroom portables have a standalone HEPA air purifier. We replaced the regular filters with four ply filters and upgraded our energy management system to allow us to schedule in a more effective manner the systems so that they can run for longer times. Our custodial staff received training on frequent and effective disinfecting and will receive an additional training in the next three weeks. We also created a daily cleaning and disinfecting checklist that will be in every classroom and our custodians will initial each day when the items are completed. These are some pictures of the items I just talked about. The transportation team has been working on schedules to be ready for students when they return to in-person instruction. Buses will have a limited capacity to ensure that there's a distance between students. The transportation department will communicate bus procedures to our schools and parents of students who ride the bus. The transportation department has implemented the procedures previously mentioned while transporting the current students we are serving. These students include students who are part of the YMCA child care program at various school sites, special education students who are part of the county programs at Horace Mann and Raymond Temple Schools, in the departments assisting John Marshall Elementary and providing instructional packages to students who the school has identified for support. We are providing learning support for students' safe return to in-person instruction. Every student will receive a backpack so that they can carry their Chromebook. Every classroom has cubbies where each student will place their learning materials. These cubbies will not be shared. Also, every student will receive a pencil box, materials and supplies needed for them to use in class and at home. These pencil boxes with materials will not be shared. Each student will have their own. We are also excited to announce that the recently reconstructed Sunkist School will be open for our Sunkist students. They will no longer need to make the long ride across town to get to their interim site. Staff is expected to return to the new Sunkist School on March 29th. We are working on starting to provide parents grab-and-go lunches at the new Sunkist as well as move the YMCA program before students return to in-person instruction. Now I would like to introduce Tracy Golden, Senior Director of School Safety and Operations who will share with us some of the training taking place to prepare our staff before our students return to school campuses. Thank you, Jesse. To increase the adult support we have for our return to in-person learning, we have hired school safety assistants for every school. Our safety assistants will be available throughout the day to support all the COVID safety protocols we have put in place for our students and staff. These employees began work on March 1st and have been participating in professional development to ensure they are ready for when students arrive. The safety assistants will be AED, CPR, first aid certified, and will also receive training on how to support students on school buses and on campus. At this time, I would like to introduce Dina Melland, Assistant Superintendent of AESD Human Resources who will share information on how we will keep you informed about COVID-19 once we return to in-person instruction. Thank you, Tracy. At the start of the pandemic, the district created the COVID Employee Response Team to support all employee COVID-19 cases and questions. This team is composed of six members of the Human Resources and School Safety and Operations Departments and is responsible for contact tracing, notifying individuals of potential exposure, and providing follow-up and guidance to each employee involved. School sites also have a site-based COVID teams to support student COVID-19 cases. Both the district employee response team and the site student teams work closely with the Orange County Health Care Agency to ensure that proper protocol and communication is followed and that the AESD COVID-19 dashboard is constantly updated. At the end of March, a COVID-19 dashboard will go live on the AESD website. Implementation of the dashboard will provide accurate and transparent information regarding COVID-19 cases on all district campuses. 
Data on the dashboard will include the number of confirmed active cases among staff and students on campus during the individual's infectious period. This information will be regularly updated by all teams as cases are confirmed. Now, back to Superintendent Downing to answer some of your questions. Thanks to all of you who submitted questions. Because the majority of your questions revolve around health and safety, I had a chance to speak with Dr. Clayton Chow, Director of the Orange County Healthcare Agency and the County Health Officer, to address some of the most frequently asked questions. Dr. Chow, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for inviting me to have this important conversation with you all. Thank you, Dr. Chow. So based on the number of questions we received on safety, my first question for you is why is it safe for the Anaheim Elementary School District to return for in-person instruction at this time? Thank you so much for that very important question. And throughout this whole pandemic, I know we work very closely with the school district, with the teacher, with the parents uh, to uh, have a robust discussion around uh, the safety of the environment for our children to come back for in-person education. And one of the things that I usually uh, recommend the school, the educators, the family, the parents to have a robust discussion around the epidemiology of the pandemic and particularly at the positivity rate. Uh, as of now, um, most, uh, most of the zip code uh, within your school district uh, enjoying the lowest uh, positivity rate we've ever seen since this last 12 months. Uh, currently on the average, uh, if you are familiar with the color tier, purple tier meaning the highest uh, positivity rate, and then the red tier is the next tier, and then the orange tier, uh, which uh, have a positivity uh, threshold uh, from two to 4.9%, uh, all of your zip code fall under that. So it's from uh, 1.3 uh, to about four. So it well in the orange range. So I think uh, I'm comfortable to say that uh, it is a good and safe environment for our children to start to come back for in-person education. Thank you, Dr. Chow. Uh, so for our next question, uh, based on your experiences with the other districts in Orange County that have already reopened, what are the benefits for students returning to in-person instruction? Uh, in general, uh, the in-person education provide this social interaction for children with their peers and then children with the adults in their life, right? The educator, the one that are really giving them the, not, not just school uh, material, but also this social example of how they could interact with each other have been so important. And most importantly, the emotional health. We do know that this 12 months of the pandemic have created an emotional toll in our children because children is at the age of learning, socializing, and they need that closeness with their peer and with the adults in their life. And so we know that this last trauma, many of our children have not um, been benefited from that. And then not everybody is really um, uh, able to cope well with online learning, especially younger children. So Dr. Chow, in closing, what advice would you give to families that are preparing to return for in-person instruction? Great, thank you. And that is a very, very important question. Number one, for parents to really ensure that your children follow those uh, public health, non-medical uh, interaction. And that is, uh, they have to keep their mask on when they're in public because they don't live together in the same household with their classmate and with the teacher. So mask is very important. And so wearing a mask is to uh, keep themselves healthy and protect other people. So that's number one. And number two, uh, make sure that they wash their hands frequently. Kids are kids, right? Uh, 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 they'll get their hands dirty and what have you, but remind them how to use hand sanitizer frequently. Uh, and then I know it's gonna be very hard for kids to keep away from their friends, and it's gonna be uh, difficult for them not to hug their friend and shake their friend's hand just because they've been apart for a whole year now. But you keep to remind them that 
you know, for, for now, they need to also be aware and keep distant from each other just to protect each other. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And be well, Dr. Chow. Thank you. So, everyone, we want to thank you for joining us in today's town hall. Answers to all submitted questions will be posted on the AESD.org website by Friday, March 19th. We would like to tell you that the plans that have been shared are based on the continuing stabilization of COVID data here in Anaheim. These plans are subject to any additional guidance from Governor Newsom, the State of California, the California Department of Public Health, or our Orange County Department of Education. Safety is our number one priority, and it is our plan at this time to reopen our schools in April and provide the safest environment possible for your child to return to in-person instruction. We look forward to providing you with additional information through these virtual town halls. Your principals will also continue to have virtual principal chats. We will continue to update our website, and we will also provide our district-wide family letters to keep you informed about the Anaheim Elementary School District and our plans to reopen. Thank you all for joining us this evening, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Stay safe and healthy.